Scoot Henderson has what can be described by many as an underwhelming rookie season. So, what's going on with Scoot Henderson? Before we talk about that, let's look into Scoot's history. Scoot Henderson is a young baller who's been turning heads since his high school days. And this guy's got some serious game. He was lacing up his kicks for Carlton J. Kell High School, and man, did he make an impact. We're talking five-star recruit status, meaning this kid's got skills for days. As a junior, he straight up dominated the court, putting up some insane numbers, 32 points a game with seven rebounds and six assists. And hey, the accolades don't lie either. He snagged that Class 6A Player of the Year title like it was nothing. At just 17, he decided to take his skills to the G League Ignite, making history as the youngest player to ever hit the hardwood in the G League. And let me tell you, he didn't waste any time making an impact. Starting in all but one of his appearances, he was putting up some serious numbers. We're talking buckets, dimes, rebounds, you name it. This kid's a triple threat. But wait, that's not all. In the 2023 draft, Scoot was even highly regarded as the second best prospect, just behind Victor Wembanyama. Fast forward to today, the Portland Trailblazers selected guard Scoot Henderson of the NBA G League with the third overall pick in the NBA draft. So, let's talk about Scoot Henderson's rookie journey so far. Now, it's no secret that Scoot's had a bit of a bumpy ride in his NBA career right now. Four games in, and the stats aren't exactly blowing minds. 8.3 points a game, 2.8 rebounds, and 4 assists. And also, 4.3 turnovers a game is a bit rough. Now, here's the thing. I've been hyping up this dude big time, saying he's one of the most NBA-ready point guard prospects out there, especially for his age. So what's the deal? Why the rocky start? And should we be hitting the panic button just yet? That's the question on everyone's minds. And in this video, we're going to figure out just what's going on with Scoot. Now, I know some of you might be raising eyebrows, wondering if I'm sweating bullets over a slow start. But here's the thing. Nah, not really. I get it. You might think I'm just brushing off the concerns, trying to save face because I've been singing Scott's praises from the rooftops. And hey, I won't blame you for thinking that way. But rookie point guards hitting a rough patch early on it's very common in the NBA. So while I'm not going to twist your arm to see it my way, just remember, patience is key, and Scoot's got plenty of time to find his rhythm. Let's dig into the numbers a bit deeper. Sure, Scoot's struggling, especially from beyond the arc. That 5.6% from 3? Yikes. But hey, his game isn't all doom and gloom. He's knocking down over half his 2-point shots, and he's not shy about letting it fly from downtown. Now, I've been watching his games closely, and I'm not seeing any major red flags in his shooting form or confidence. I mean, the dude's letting it rain from deep despite those low percentages. If we're talking about a playoff bound squad, yeah, maybe I'm sweating a bit. But for now, it's just part of a rookie learning curve. And Scoot's got plenty of time to find his stroke. Let's compare Scoot's rookie numbers to other point guards to their first four NBA games. So, Scoot's putting up 8.3 points a game, grabbing 2.8 boards, and dishing out four assists. But hey, He's also coughing up the rock 4.3 times a game, shooting at a 37.32% clip. Now, let's check out some other rookie point guards through their first four outings. How about Darius Garland? He was averaging 9.5 points, but only pulling down 1.3 rebounds and dishing out 3.5 assists with 3.3 turnovers, shooting at a 40.42% clip. Jamal Murray? Man, he had a slow start, with just 0.5 points per game. But hey, he was hauling in 2.5 boards and dishing out 2.3 dimes at least, right? And then there's Russell Westbrook, who is putting up 11.5 points, snagging 3 rebounds and dishing 2.5 assists, with 2.3 turnovers, shooting at a solid 48.12%. Now, these are just a few examples, but it goes to show, rookie point guards, they all gotta find their footing in the league. So, while Scoop might be going through some growing pains, he's in good company, and there's plenty of room for improvement. When it comes to tough starts in the NBA, just take a look at some of the league's biggest stars. Kyrie Irving? Yeah, his debut wasn't exactly a highlight reel, just two buckets out of 13 attempts. And let's not forget about Lamella Ball, who had zero points in his first NBA game. So trust me when I say, Scoot ain't the first rookie point guard to hit a rough patch, and he definitely won't be the last. Considering Portland's in a bit of a rebuilding phase, Scoot's getting some valuable core time to work through those rough patches. And that's key for his development. Let's talk about his three-point shooting. Look, I'm not expecting him to suddenly become a sniper overnight, but I do believe those shots will start finding the bottom of the net eventually. Rookie season struggles? Yeah, they happen. 
but I don't think Scoot's going to be stuck in this shooting slump all season long. Now, here's something I've been noticing when I've been breaking down his game. Scoot's still figuring out how to draw fouls in the NBA. It seems like he's expecting calls on some pretty minimal contact drives, and that might be throwing off his rhythm a bit. Instead of relying solely on drawing fouls, he's going to have to use his strength and agility to power through defenders and finish strong at the rim. And trust me, with his physical tools, teams are going to be throwing everything they've got at him. So he's got to be ready to battle through that contact and still get buckets. It's all part of the learning process for Scoot. But hey, with time and experience, I'm confident Scoot's going to figure it out and start making some serious noise in this league. Another aspect to consider is Scoot's situation, which has sometimes put a lid on his aggressiveness. When you're constantly tiptoeing around foul limits, it's tough to unleash your full potential, especially for a player like Scoot, who thrives on his aggressive style. But here's the deal. Once he hones in on his foul discipline and gets accustomed to the physicality of the game, the sky's the limit. And let's talk about turnovers. Every rookie point guard's got to work up on tightening their passes and protecting the rock better. And Scoot's no exception. But here's the thing. The kid's got athleticism for days. And with his smarts on the court, I'm confident he'll clean up those loose ends in no time. So, while these are all common rookie hiccups, I'm not losing sleep over them, especially with a cerebral player like Scoot at the helm. Despite the bumps in the road, there's still plenty to be excited about when we break down Scoot's games. Remember those plays that had us all hyped up about his potential? Well, they're still there. This dude's not shying away from attacking the rim, and when he goes for it, he's using every ounce of his speed and strength to finish strong. And let's talk about that mid-range game. In the Toronto matchup, he was straight up lethal. I'm talking about using his speed to stop on a dime, create space, and knock down those smooth mid-range jumpers. Now. Even though the numbers might not always reflect it, that Raptors game, it was a glimpse into Scoot's potential as a special point guard in this league. So, before we start panicking over a slow start to his rookie season, let's remember, it's just four games in, and Scoot's still just 19 years old. Scoot Henderson's rookie season hasn't exactly been a walk in the park. The stats don't lie, and right now, they're not painting a pretty picture. But here's the thing, Scoot's numbers aren't a total disaster. Sure, they're not where we'd hope they'd be, but they're not completely off the mark either. And when we dive into his games, we're still seeing glimpses of the player we all believed he could be. His struggles aren't stemming from a complete breakdown in areas that we thought were his strengths. Nah, he's still showing skills in the very areas that got us excited about him in the first place. Now, don't get me wrong. If Scoot was shooting bricks left and right at the rim and suddenly forgot how to handle the rock, yeah, I'd be a bit more worried. Scoot's inefficiency seems more like his shooting slump from three than any major mechanical issues or confidence dips. And let's be real, nobody was expecting him to come into the league and start draining threes like Steph or Dane. He's got to step up his game in some areas. Improving his foul discipline would open up a whole new world of opportunities for him on offense, letting him unleash his full potential. Plus, he's got to recognize just how physically dominant he is on the court and adjust his game accordingly. Instead of solely focusing on drawing fouls, he should be attacking the rim with authority using that strength to finish strong. And yeah, that three-point shot, it's got to start falling eventually. Look, I'm not saying that he needs to morph into a three-point sniper overnight, but that 5.6%, it's got to improve. And hey, I've got faith in the kid. He's shown serious growth before, and with his talent and basketball IQ, I'm confident he'll iron out these wrinkles as the season rolls on. Let's not forget, he's still just a rookie, and forming a solid opinion after just four games? That's a bit premature if you ask me. So, despite the rocky start, I'm sticking to my guns. Scoot's got what it takes to be something special in the league, and I'm excited to watch him prove the doubters wrong as he continues to grow and develop. So what do you guys think? Is Scoot gonna have his comeback or not? What's next for Scoot and the Blazers going forward? Make sure to subscribe to Hoop Pulse right after this video, and click that notification bell icon for more videos just like this one.